What's up guys, back here with another video for you today. This time I've noticed that I uh, haven't done one of these five underrated metal records videos in a little bit and I have had a friggin' crazy busy week, man. I haven't had any time to like plan out a video like I usually do. So I am just rolling with um, kind of what I have time for and I'm just going to go for the uh, the series. We're listening to Emin Mule in the background. This is Elanomia and Kalima. Um, not a hundred percent sure if that's pronounced right, probably not, but I'm sure you guys are familiar with this band. It's kind of, uh, really epic summoning influence, basically summoning worship style of black metal. Kronos is already here. Um, he knew we were filming a video, so he had to come hang. It's a good boy. Fauna's upstairs. We're drinking an Oktoberfest by Sam Adams, which, you know, that's different for me, man. I don't drink a lot of Sam Adams. I don't really like a lot of mass-produced stuff. He's trying to itch himself on my pint glass. Kronos is every kind of nuisance you can think of sometimes. <laughs> All right. So the story with the Sam Adams is, is I was at my local grocery store that I used to work at, and they were doing demos of a beer. And um, the guy was offering a free drink of beer, and I'm like, yeah, what do you think this is? Think I'm not gonna say yes to a free beer unless it's Miller Lite, probably not then. Actually, then, yeah, probably too. But anyway, um, so I tasted it and I was like, wow, this is actually really tasty. So in Australia, so I was pretty impressed with it. So if you guys are skeptical of a mass produce, like I tend to be, pretty good. All right, let's get into it. First one. Slytherin with the album A Tale Will Tell of What Hath Been. This is a American black metal band. They're absolutely awesome. Um, they are definitely in the atmospheric category and they kind of toe the line between epic and regular atmospheric black metal. Um, there's a ton of like really melodic stylistic tendencies for this band. Um, while kind of keeping a lower profile, you know, it's not the most intense of atmospheric black metal, you know, like Winter Phyleth and Woden's Throne is like a really blasty and fast kind of trancey, hypnotic band. This band seems to leave a little bit more breathing room for their riffs and their stuff to just kind of tr transport the individual rather than a suggestive atmosphere, if you guys catch what I'm talking about. Um, so there's like little folky melodic tendencies as well like you get in a lot of the this more atmospheric black metal as well as a good amount of the uh you know the summoning influence you'd come to expect from this kind of stuff that's actually what i thought it was when i first went to check this band out was basically summoning what about harry potter which as you might imagine that's the theme of a band called slytherin they do a really awesome rendition of the song Chamber of Secrets by John Williams and it is absolutely amazing. If you guys don't know what the Chamber of Secrets is, it's, it's the main uh, theme of Harry Potter. It's just, or at least in that movie, I think it's the main theme of Harry Potter entirely. So it's just so, so good. There's also a track called Sword of Gryffindor and Salazar Slytherin, uh, Godric's Hollow, it's just really cool. I'm not a huge Harry Potter dork like some guys are. I think it's cool. I like Harry Potter. I find it pretty entertaining. But for the most part, I mostly tend to stick to more of the Elder Scrolls nerdy lore. Uh, but that's, you know, that's besides the point. Anyway, Slytherin. Next, this is one of the most important metal bands for me. Or death metal bands for me in general. So I guess kind of metal bands. This is Stages of Decomposition with their album Piles of Rotting Flesh. I got into this band, how long ago? Literally, this is like the first death metal album I actively went and checked out. I heard Count Blagareth's review of this. To, for those of you who have been around for a while, you guys know all this. But this is like the first thing I ever watched to Count Blagareth, and then I watched a bunch of his videos. And he was explaining like the point of slam and brutal death metal and like what they're going for with this style. And I was like, well, I really do get what you're talking about. And I went and listened to it and I was like, wow, 
slamming, you know, gross sounding, belligerently heavy, and I'm like, hmm, I see where you're coming from. So I went and listened to that, and I kept watching the guy's videos. But this album is like slam, but a lot more on the side of traditional old school, like brutal death metal, you know, your suffocations, um, your internal bleedings, your more mortal decay stuff, I guess. Stuff like that, rather than, you know, following on the side of, um, you know, straight up slam bands like Cranium or Epicardiectomy or Cerebral Incubation. It's just, it's a really, really good record. It's well balanced. It's got enough of that early uh, Brutal Death Metal tinge to make it, I think, a bit more accessible to those people who aren't really into um, regular slam or anything like that. But uh, definitely check out Stage Digital Decomposition's Piles of Rotting Flesh if you have not. Next, this is a really, really awesome band. Uh, I picked this up off of Hell's Headbangers. This is Witch Trap with the album Trap the Witch. I really, really like Witch Trap. This is a, probably my favorite metal band out of Columbia that I could think of. If I'm taking a lot of space, by the way, in between my words and stuff like that, I am uh, going to an allergy doctor in a couple of days, and uh, I'm not allowed to take my allergy medicine, so my mind is like super hazy, and like I have a lot of pressure on my face, and I can barely breathe out of my nose. So, um, yeah, that's an issue I'm currently having. So, Witch Trap. Uh, so, it's kind of like first wave black metal worship with a lot more of like the sleaze, I would say. It's not like lyrically sleazy, but it sounds sleazy, if you get what I mean. It's pretty raw, uh, it's very aggressive. It kind of has that Brazilian tinge, you know, South America has this charm to their style of metal that you kind of can't, you can replicate elsewhere, but I feel like it's natural from these countries. Uh, South America and Central America, obviously, because Colombia is Central America, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's just like a genuine rawness that you really can't, you really can't argue with, man. Witch Trap is great. If you like the early Or Noir stuff, if you like Obsessed by Cruelty, Era Sodom, things like that, Volcano, uh, whatever else, you know, the raw side of Black Thrash, you'll dig this one. This, this is actually, I guess I would consider this a classic metal band, but I feel like a lot of people don't really know this record. This is Filth Hounds of Hades by Tank. Tank is an absolute classic speed metal, proto speed metal, epic, kind of just like, not epic, sorry, uh, like regular traditional metal band. They're kind of teetering the line more along the Venom and the Motorhead line. Um, you know, I feel like this gets a decent amount of praise, but I don't think it gets as many praise from the younger generation like myself. Um, a lot of guys my age don't seem to really listen to this much, like, epic, or epic metal and traditional metal, stuff like that. I don't know what it is. It seems like they're more interested in, you know, core bands and, uh, you know, maggot stomp, death metal, which is whatever. At least you like stuff with guitars. That's what I always say. Um... But yeah, it's just fun. It's rock and roll infused. It's bluesy. It's pretty raw. It sounds really, really genuine. I mean, Tank is just a band that's, I think, really, really underappreciated. And I think it fits really well into this series because of that. Uh, if you guys watch Stranger Things, did you guys notice this album cover poster in Billy's room in uh, season three, maybe four? I think season three. Yeah, season three, duh. If you uh, haven't watched it, keep an eye out when you go into Billy's room. Look out for the tank poster. Next, this is going to be the last one for the five underrated metal records. This one, um, this is kind of what I wish Sepultura was today. This is Cavalier Conspiracy with Blunt Force Trauma. So, like... How I jokingly call uh, stuff like Sanguis Sugar Bog and 200 Stab Wounds Mouth Breather Death Metal. Um, obviously, I like both of those bands. I think they're really good. This is like Mouth Breather Thrash Metal. 
It's like a couple riffs a song. It's catchy. It's somewhat repetitive. There's not a ton of solos. Um, it, it's really fun. It's obviously the two Cavalier brothers. Hey, Kronos is biting me because I stopped petting him. What a butt. Um, yes, the two Cavalier brothers just doing their thing, you know, making tunes that they like to hear. Uh, the song, a couple of my favorite tracks on here are Lynch Mob, Torture, uh, Warlord's really good. Torture specifically is probably the best one on here, I think. Uh, Burn Waco is cool. Genghis Khan, Target. It, it's just really catchy. It's repetitive. It kind of sounds like um, Arise era Sepultura, maybe with some of like just the new thrash. You know, the, like the revival thrash kind of mixed together. It's a pretty good record, man. I really enjoy some of the Cavalier Conspiracy stuff. Uh, again, uh, Soulfly started off really, really bad, but then they got in, they went ahead and made like Archangel and some of that stuff. It's pretty similar in style, just similarly intense. Um, so yeah, I'm going to call it at that one, guys. I don't feel too great. So I'm not going to sit here and make like a 20 minute video or anything, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next week. Keep it greasy.